I'm Robert Escher and this is livingpianos.com. The question today is, is socialism good for music? Now this is a very complex question and there's a lot to think about. So let's start with what the first thing that's probably gonna to come to a lot of your minds, which is the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had um, quite a vibrant music scene and composers like Shostakovich, Kachaturian and others, they, they were funded by the government and had illustrious careers and wrote great music. Shostakovich in particular suffered though under the authoritarian rule. So while it was great that artists were funded, you know, had, had uh, Shearing and, and um, uh, Richter and so many great pianists, violinists, orchestras that were funded and musicians could make a living, but at the same time, the authoritarian rule was a heavy hand telling people what they could play, what they could compose, and how to glorify the state. So it was really a double-edged sword. Well, what about today? Are there any socialized music today? Well, yes, there is. If you talk about socialism as something that's publicly funded, which is really what socialism is in its most basic form, Germany has 133 symphony orchestras that are publicly funded. A vibrant scene. That's in addition, by the way, to private orchestras. Now, not all of them are funded like the Berlin Philharmonic. There are different tiers, just like there are here. Of course, in the United States, orchestras are endowed with private donations and are always struggling. Many go bankrupt, and there are fewer and fewer of them as the years go on. So Germany has something going there that is really vibrant for the classical music scene. Well. Is there any kind of socialized music in the United States with Germany with 133 orchestras? Well, can you believe that there are 140 bands? There are 5,000 professional musicians paid for with our tax dollars right here in the U.S. of A. In fact, the government spent $1.55 billion with a B dollars in a recent four-year period on military bands. That's right, 140 bands, military bands, the Air Force, Marines, the Army, the Navy, they all have music. They spent over $155 million just on instruments and equipment in that same four-year period. So there's a tremendous amount of money going into music in this country, and that's basically a social program for music and musicians. So it's all about how the money is spent and how it's delegated and what the rules, what strings come with it. The Soviet Union was very harsh, glorifying uh, music for the, for the party. And in Germany, it's basically glorifying the great traditions of Western composers. And here, it's about the military. So there are different ways that money, public money can be utilized in music. I'd love to get your opinions about the different ways that public funding can help music and what your thoughts are about what I've outlined here today. I'd love to hear from you. Again, I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com, your online piano store.